Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Artificial intelligence was a standout topic this year, and I think going into next year we're going to hear more and more about its marriage with robots, and specifically general purpose humanoid robots. For those who aren't caught up, here's a quick recap of what's happened, along with the latest news. We saw Boston Dynamics Atlas performing a very smooth choreographed routine at a mock workplace. Sanctuary AI released a range of videos throughout the year showing off the dexterity of their Phoenix robot, demonstrating it carrying out a range of tasks that until recently were out of reach for general purpose robots. The bots also began real world testing at the Canadian Tire Corporation. Clone Robotics unveiled their synthetic hand with remarkable levels of smooth movement and dexterity. Toyota's Research Institute developed a new way to teach robots how to learn tasks by combining human demonstration with an AI model that picks up foundational skills and gives the robots the tools to start figuring out completely new tasks on their own. Amazon began real-world trials of Agility Robotics Digit Humanoid in their warehouse research facility. IMHC Robotics showed off some upgrades to their Nadia bot's walking and stepping capabilities and we saw an updated version of Tesla's Optimus bot with impressive hand dexterity and rumours of them being tested on the car company's production lines. Returning to the present day, and this month Singapore-based Fourier Intelligence launched the production version of their GR1 humanoid robot. It weighs 55 kilos or 120 pounds, is 165 centimetres or just under 5.5 feet tall, can carry up to 50 kilos or 110 pounds and can walk up to 5 kilometres per hour. Like the others covered, this one is designed as a general purpose bot and has both a teleoperated mode and an autonomous mode that has its own vision perception system. Limex Dynamics also showed off their CL1 robot this week too, demonstrating its walking and stair climbing capabilities in a range of dynamic tests. Unlike other pre-programmed showcases, this robot has its own vision processing capabilities which according to them allows the machine to perceive its environment in real time and respond without external input. Moving away from humanoid bots but sticking with automation, and Locus Robotics recently announced that their warehouse fulfillment bots help process a staggering 331 million e-commerce items across their clients during Cyber Week this year, which they say is 66% more than the previous year. In similar news, Pipe Dream Labs have been exploring an interesting way to automate deliveries by using underground robots. A pilot system was installed in the town of Peachtree Corners, Georgia, which connected a busy shopping centre with a popular office building almost a mile away with the help of underground tunnels. According to their site, the robots can travel over 40 miles per hour, delivering packages weighing up to 40 pounds to temperature-controlled collection points. It certainly is a unique alternative to all the drone deliveries we've been seeing recently, but I think the massive infrastructure needed to install these systems is going to be a big hurdle. Switching to virtual and augmented reality, and the FAA recently granted a supplemental type certificate for AirSail's augmented reality headset for commercial pilots, allowing them to be trialled on certain Boeing planes. The headset, when combined with a vision system that attaches to the front of the aircraft, enables pilots to see in a variety of conditions where they otherwise would have poor or no visibility. This is the first time I've personally seen this kind of technology being used outside of military settings. Mix News also posted another great article rounding up all the different ways virtual reality is working its way into entertainment, from cinemas to museums, amusement arcades and more. Moving to manufacturing news, and researchers at Harvard have developed a way of increasing the strength of rubber. The new process involved developing rubber with something called highly entangled polymer chains and then adding clusters of particles to the material, resulting in reinforced rubber that has an increased fatigue factor of 10 and does not develop cracks with repeated use. This research holds a lot of promise with rubber manufacturing in general and could be particularly useful for applications like soft robotics. And ending this week with two DIY 3D printing videos. CNC Kitchen explored how to go about recycling plastic disposable cutlery to turn it into 3D printing filament and the results were very interesting. I'll definitely be keeping my eye on this kind of research. Another video by Robert Murray Smith demonstrated a surprisingly simple way to add real copper coating to 3D prints without using the standard electroplating methods we've seen before. Robert's solution involved preparing a print by dipping it in acetone, then placing it inside an inexpensive rock tumbler along with copper powder, steel ball bearings and filler tumbling material. Surprisingly, this simple tumbling motion cold welds the copper powder onto the print with very nice results. Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist.
See you next time.